And I, I want to reiterate what has already been stated. Uh, we really have to do something. And I think what needs to start is within the community itself. We got to keep talking to each other and saying enough is enough with the gun violence. We already had a gun turn in program, but so much more needs to be done. Uh, the police can't do it all by themselves. The community has to come back and reclaim their community and state that we all are brothers and sisters in this community and we share with each other's joys and sorrows and so we want to remember each one and say let's let's become community again we have sandy brock's mother who's here and we know some years ago he was gunned down and so many others and we really need to start speaking out against this senseless violence because we're ending lives too soon and devastating families. And as I said, the, the community has to reclaim itself and state that we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. And so with that, let us pray. Eternal God, we come tonight recognizing the senseless violence that continues to plague our community, wherein lives are lost and families are devastated. And so right now we pray for those families and ask you to give them the comfort that they so need. But also we ask that our community reclaim itself by establishing the fact that we are each other's brothers and sisters and that we need each other to make life better for us all. God, we pray now for this group that have gathered tonight to share of themselves and their times and to say that enough is enough we are one and we want a safe community to raise our family and our children in and so lord we ask that you give us strength to do the work that is needed to make life better for all of us this is our prayer tonight in your name we pray amen amen, amen. 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 Brother, so, brother baker i just want, I want to thank you for saying that you know and it's, it's it's sad that we have to come together on this occasion it's really sad i wish i had a microphone so everyone can hear me. I know the vehicles are going by. You may not hear what's being said, but um, I mean, this, I don't know if it's going to take this or if it's going to take more elaborate efforts. If we're going to have to really do something significant, something has to be done. I mean, for us to continually be here, memorializing or memorizing somebody that's no longer with us because of a sense of, of violence. And the person who did it, we don't know who that is, but we want to find out what's wrong with that person. Why do they have that kind of anger? Why are they resulting to such violence? And the violence is leading to death. You know, we have to, you know, we need to find a way, everybody here, I don't have everybody's contact information, but I definitely want to make sure I do get it. So if you have a, either a business card or if you, you write it, let's make sure we keep in touch. Let's make sure that we send a powerful message. Let's make sure we let everybody know that we don't have to stand here. We have a woman here now, and I hate to, to remind everybody, when I first started Shoot Hoops Not Guns, what motivated me to do it was one, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a former basketball player. I happen to play, play, play for this, this good, this great coach here, who I'm sure he'll test to some of the violence that he's seen way before I came along. And, and Karen Brock happens to be the mother of a, I would like to say, an NBA, NBA bound player. I don't know if Eddie wants to elaborate on that, but a very talented young man. He wasn't a drug dealer, he wasn't a gangster, he wasn't a criminal. He was a law-abiding citizen, went to Curtis High School. He graduated, he had, a college, he had a college scholarship opportunity that he was cut short of. And I don't know, I heard somewhere that he had gotten a letter or he got a phone call that he was accepted to a particular university and that was not fulfilled. Why? An act of violence. And I keep saying, it's, 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 it amazes me how, although everybody here has a life and they have things that they're doing, some of us are really busy. It needs to be noted that they took time out of their schedule to be here. They found it important enough. And I noticed this on familiar faces that was at another vigil that we did on December 28th. Actually, excuse me, December 30th, because the shooting occurred on December 28th, and Earl Sutton was shot eight times, made it to the hospital, fought for a few days. I think 23 minutes after the ball dropped on New Year's, he succumbed to bullet wounds. Again, that's another act of gun violence. Why did that happen? You know, what, what is it that we can do? I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna accept that we can't do anything. 
I'm not, I'm not buying into that. I think there's a lot more we can do. I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. And a lot of times I take, I don't know why, but I take it personally responsible since I, I started an organization that was going to fight against gun violence, try to get sensible gun laws in place. And every time somebody's wounded or somebody succumbs to a gun wound, I start saying, is this something I could have did more effective? I mean, do we need more billboards out there? Do we need more mentoring? Do we need more churches coming into the community? Do we need more community leaders coming out? Do we need to organize events that speak out and denounce gun violence before it takes place, not after? You know, this way, when people see a rally and they see people getting together, they can find out, no, no one was killed. We're here because we want to prevent that. So I think a lot of preventative measures have to take place. I think we need to put more things in place that reach the people, you know, because we live in a culture right now where we, we, we glorify gangsterism, for lack of a better word. I don't want to blame the music, but the music, it does attract our young people. The lyric, the lyrical content, it does something to their minds. And when these rappers tell these young people what to do and how to do it, they glorify and worship them almost as if they're God. And whatever they say, this is what they go out and do. It's a lot more deeper, deep-rooted than, than that. But I think that our music plays a role. You know, I mean, I went to Boston. I went to an NBA game. And I, a lot of you may not be familiar with basketball. Some of you are. And I spoke to NBA player Tracy Brady, who plays for the Houston Rockets. And what I said to him, I said, Tracy, don't take this personally, but, like, you know, I mentioned where, who I was and the organization I was from, and I said, you know, a lot of these young kids, they praise you and they worship you like you're God, and you're really not. And since they worship and praise you that way, is there anything you can do to tell them to, to not get involved with the violence? Because they will listen. They don't necessarily listen to me. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an athlete. So, I mean, I may gain the attention of some of them, but the, a lot of our people who are out in the forefront, you know, they, we need to, if they, if they spoke out against it, if they did something, you know, people like ourselves, you know, it's not only left up to us, you know, it's not only our job to go out and talk, talk out against us, you know.